Hey listeners, welcome to another episode of the Snowy's Camping Show. If you haven't joined us before, please make sure you subscribe either via YouTube or your favourite podcast app and you can join in on the conversation at the Snowy's Facebook show, uh, Snowy's Camping Show Facebook group where you can join in on uh, this conversation, previous conversations, and you can add your own questions and tell us about your experience. We've got another episode today with our resident caravan expert, Kev, welcome again to the show, Thank Kev. you, Ben. Thank you, Lauren. Also joined by Lauren, as usual. Um, today, Kev, uh, we're questioning you about towing a caravan. Now, we've yes. covered off on kind of like getting into caravanning, buying a caravan before in a previous episode. Right. Bit, of, bit of a deeper dive into towing. The, yes. The things you've got to think about. Um, try and avoid that, that mm. scenario where there's a car driving down the highway with, you know, dipping in the middle. That's right. Swaying all over the road. Yeah. Sort of yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, so jumping straight into it. I mean, I'm, I don't tow. I don't. I don't like to tow things. Yep. I I'd probably tow a, a a trailer once a year when I'm helping someone move a house, and it takes me the weekend before I get used to it. But I don't like towing when I'm when I'm traveling. That's just me. Yep. I have thought a few times maybe if I did, it might be easier to distribute the weight. So if people are kind of thinking, you know, they've got a car, I've got a tow ball, I've camped out of the car, should I tow a caravan? Is what what what, what would be the first things people want to really have a think about before oh. they just go and buy a caravan and start to tow it down the yeah, road? Yeah, look, uh, as I sort of mentioned last time, the first thing you've got to consider is what your car can actually tow. It's now you're just looking at a nice big caravan. Oh, yes, that looks nice and neat. Got lots of things if it's too heavy for the car to tow. So you do really need to look at your car first and see what its rated towing capacity is and what its rated tow ball capacity is, which is how much weight it can carry on the tow ball because those are fairly crucial. Uh, and if you are over those limits, then you can't legally tow that caravan. So what's the difference between tow ball weight and towing weight? Because I would have thought that they're the same thing. Yeah. No, your, your, tow, your towing capacity is what they call the, the loaded caravan or the ATM, the aggregate tear mass. Uh, that is how much the caravan can weigh maximum. Uh, while sitting on on the ground on its okay. jockey wheel. Okay. So not connected to the car at all. Mm -hmm. So that's how much the car can legally tow. Mm -hmm. Tow ball weight is how much the car can carry on the back of the car on the tow ball. So there's okay. approximately, and this will vary greatly, but there's approximately 10% of your caravan weight on the tow ball. Okay. So if you've got a 2,000 kilo caravan, you'll have up to 200 kilos on the tow ball. So uh, when you're looking to get a caravan, will that give you the tow ball weight as yes, well? Yes, okay. Yes, yes, because anyone, if, especially if you're going through a dealer, mm -hmm. <coughs> excuse me, uh, the, the dealer will ask you what your car is and they'll make sure that the van you're looking at will be able to be towed legally mm -hmm. with that car. So if people have got, like, the SUVs are quite popular. Yes. Nowadays, like a smaller, um, mm. uh, you know, independent suspension SUV yep. um, for a family of four, not a big four-wheel drive, but what, can they, can they tow yeah. Massive caravans that you see out there. Like what's an average oh, yeah. caravan weigh? Oh, look, if, if you, uh, I mean, uh, looking at what's on the road, there's people a lot of going for the, the, the tandem axle off-road caravan. It's a pretty popular type of van. Um, mm -hmm. These things are around about 20 foot long. Um, I know that's old fashioned, but so am I. Um, <laughs> but they're, they're about 20 foot long. They can weigh anything up to about two tonne. Okay. Perhaps a little bit more. Uh, in some cases, particularly the off-road versions, because they're much much beefier built with the chassis and suspension. So your average small SUV wouldn't probably wouldn't be able to tow that. Um, yeah. But you get smaller ones. Uh, you get up to your Land Cruisers and things like that. Um, they can actually legally tow three and a half ton. Right. So you can not that you'd want to tow a three and a half ton caravan. It's yeah. an awfully big van. Yeah. Um, mm. But they can carry those um, those conventional, I suppose, or, or popular tandem axle off-road vans quite easily. Yeah. So I'm assuming, um, <clears throat> excuse me, when you talk, when you're looking at caravans and the weights that are that are supplied to you mm. with it, obviously that's not going to be including like your chairs and your clothes and the things that you'll add into it. But will that include, say, a full tank of water if you've got an onboard water tank, or is that the empty mm. weight? It, it's this can be very confusing to people, and I must admit I did quite a bit of research when I was asked to do this podcast. Um, and ultimately I went to the government websites okay. to, to find out what they are saying. And I went to three different government websites, New South Wales, West Australia and South Australia, and they all say the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, the, the tear weight of the caravan is as it comes from the factory right. with all of its fittings. So you might have an air conditioner fitted, you might have an awning fitted, mm -hmm. uh, you might have you know, two spare wheels fitted, whatever that comes from the factory. They weigh the caravan at that time and that is your tear weight. 
Mm-hmm. It does not include water in the tanks or gas in the gas bottles, or food or clothing or anything else yeah. you might put in after. That's your payload. Okay. And when you add those, you then end up with an aggregate tear mass, which is how much the caravan can legally weigh on the road. Right. So that's a little bit like your tear mass of your car and then your gross vehicle mass of your car. Gross vehicle mass of a caravan is actually what's on the axles only. Oh, right. Yeah. Well, yeah this so is, this is, this is why it gets yeah, confusing. Okay. So then you, you've got gross, gross combined max, yeah. mass as well with car and vehicle. Yeah, well, so your gross vehicle mass is how much is legally able to be carried on the axles, on the tyres, mm-hmm. um, because your car is supporting some of that. Right. So that takes that away from your aggregate TMS. So that so TMS is, is the two, the, the tyres and the, and the jockey wheel. The like aggregate three, three TMS. Uh, uh, aggregate TMS is your tyre, jockey wheel, and all of the stuff that's on there. Right. Fully loaded with water, Gosh. with fuel, with um, gas, with with um, you know, clothing uh, and chairs, like you say, tables, yeah. chairs, whatever you put on it. That is your aggregate TMS and that is all on your compliance plate uh, and you can't go over that legally. If you are over that, you are overloading your caravan mm-hmm. and you may not get insurance if you have an accident. You may not have any warranty if something is damaged mm-hmm. and you may be stopped on the side of the road by the police who are currently, they do occasionally do Pretty hot on it. checks. Mm. And I've seen people being weighed on the side of the road with portable scales. Really? With car- portable with scales? caravans. Yeah. Wow. Just like they weigh the big trucks. They they'll have portable scales, get them out, and they'll weigh the caravans, particularly the big caravans. They'll weigh them. And I, I have heard people being told we're yeah. going no further with this caravan. I feel like I've seen more of it recently because yeah. obviously people are doing more in-house travelling within yes. Australia. And yep. so they are. They do seem to be a, a lot more hot on it at the moment. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think they are. They are being mm. aware. I mean, they used, to be, they used to just turn a blind eye, but when you sort of see vans swaying all over the road and you sort of think, well, that can cause a terrible accident. Of course, yeah. You know, uh, and they've got to sort of be on top of it. So mm. they, they do. They, okay. I've only probably seen it twice, but I've heard about it quite a few times, yeah. Do so, you, Oh, sorry, Ben, you go. I was going to say, if someone buys a second-hand caravan then, mm. so it come, they, if someone's bought it, take a step back, someone's bought it new and they've got that, uh, what was the, te- the, the, the te- TMS. Of, and of the, the TMS, yeah, not, yeah. yeah, the agri TMS. And someone buys it second hand, but there's been some changes. They've changed a, a fridge or added something or whatever. Then that mm-hmm. changes again, doesn't it? So the it compliance does. plate does the compliance plate need to be updated it in line with? Be. It yeah, should be. It yeah. should be. Uh, but your it compliance may not be. plate, as I said, comes from the factory. If you've bought a, uh, a what you might call a naked van with just the van mm-hmm. uh, and empty tanks, no accessories on it at all, then that'll be the TMS. Now you add an air conditioner, could weigh. I don't know, 50 kilos. Yeah. You add an awning, could weigh another 30, 40 kilos. You add a second spare wheel, another 25 kilos. You might add extra water tanks and fill them up. That's mm. another 60 kilos or so. And suddenly you're, you're getting very close to your aggregate TMS without putting any clothes or food in it. Mm. So it, it's something you should be aware of. Um, it's just a matter of asking when you buy it, have you added anything? They say no. It's all came with it. Then you should be buying. But if they say, oh, yes, I'll put this on, I'll put that on, I'll put that on, I think, hmm might need to weigh this before I can tow it, especially if you're very close to the limit. Mm-hmm. And how does one then weigh it? You take it to a public weigh bridge. Yeah. And just, so your car goes over. Your car go, You drive over the weigh bridge, your car goes off the weigh bridge. Yep. And the best way to do it is to put your jockey wheel down onto the weigh bridge. So yep. the whole caravan is sitting on the weigh right. bridge and just wind the jockey wheel up so that the, the coupling just comes away from the tow ball mm-hmm. so that the yep. car is supporting nothing. Yeah. That will be your... Um, whatever that weight is, has to be underneath the aggregate tear waste because you can't actually determine the aggregate tear mass by a weigh bridge. It's, it's designed by engineers. Yeah, okay. They, they work out what the caravan can legally weigh yeah. uh, safely and that's what they put in it. But you have to weigh the caravan to see if you're under that weight. And weigh mm. there, you might as well do your car as well so you can get the whole well, picture. <laughs> yeah. put, so that's interesting <laughs> because if you want to then work out what the turbo mass is, you put the caravan back on the car and weigh it again. And ah. the difference between the two will be how much weight your tow ball is. That's really interesting. Right. Mm. Okay. Well, so everyone's probably pretty confused now. Oh, I'm not, <laughs> it's not hard. It's not hard at all to be confused. Like I said, I had to do quite a bit of research myself. I've been in this game for a long time and I still mm. had to think, hmm, is that right? Is that changed? You know, am I right? But yeah. But yeah. So um, just in terms of towing weights and things like that, electric brakes, if a caravan has electric brakes and your car obviously mm. has electric brakes, does that affect your towing capacities and towing weights at all if it's got its own braking system? Yes, yes. You can't tow any trailer, caravan mm-hmm. boat over there, that weighs over 750 kilos 
without brakes. Okay. So once it hits that 750 kilo mark, you've got to have brakes fitted okay. uh, and they can be override, they can be electric, they can be, um, I've seen some vans with vacuum operated brakes, you know, all this mm. sort of thing, fairly old events, but they must have brakes once you go over 750 kilos. Okay. Yeah, you can't get away from that at all. So it's not like um, adding electric bla- brakes can give you a, a higher towing capacity? It will, yes. Okay, if, so if, if you, you have a trailer, for example, mm-hmm. that have no brakes on at all, yeah. Um, the most it can weigh, as I said, it will be 750 kilos. It, it might weigh more, yeah. but you can't tow it. But I'm talking yeah, about, right. say, if you had a smaller SUV mm-hmm. and you bought a smaller caravan, but it still was probably out, it's still under 750 kilos or a camper trailer or something yeah, like that. Yeah. Would the addition of electric brakes to that situation allow that little SUV to tow more than it probably it, it would, would, would on, on paper? It would because if, if you look in your handbook, you'll find that you'll have an unbraked towing capacity and a ah, braked towing okay. capacity. Yeah, right. Unbraked is 750 kilos or left. Mm-hmm. Braked is up to whatever the manufacturer specifies. Right. Okay. Yeah. I guess right. people need to consider too that if they've got a trailer that's seven hundred kilos, yeah. and then they put hundred kilos of stuff in there, it, yeah. they need to add brakes to that as well. So they you're, you're to, not yeah. just talking the weight of the trailer, are you? No, you're no, talking this the total is gross weight of, mass with with all gross the mass loaded, on top. That's right. Mm-hmm. And you find that a lot of um, garden places, you might go down, want to get a trailer load of sand or gravel or something. They'll only put a little bit in your trailer if there's no brakes on it, because they they are yeah, also right. partly responsible. Yeah, because they course. are helping you to overload your trailer, mm. and they'll say, "No, you only get half a scoop." And I, that's happened to me. I've got a little trailer, and yeah, I can only. We are getting a little bit off track. We're getting onto general garden advice. Yeah, here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, no, our, our, our relevant, cage, right? yeah, yeah, like our cage trailer at home, obviously on its own isn't. 750 kilos, no. but it has its own brakes. So when you slow down, it automatically yep. breaks. Yep. Whereas yep. my parents have a camper trailer that has like a cable plug that yep. you plug into your car and your car has it's to have brakes, yeah. that control. Yep. So braked. they're, they're yeah. still braked, aren't yeah. they? They're just yep. two just different, different kinds. Systems, yeah. yeah. So what's a brake? Um, things are coming to my head as we're talking here. A yep. brake controller then. I've yep. seen them. I've never really understood them. Not being uh, a tow on myself. Electric brake controller is what you fit in your car. Yep. Uh, it works um, by... When you put your foot on the brake, it'll apply the brakes uh, to a certain level. You can adjust it so it'll start to apply the brakes. As you brake harder, there is a sensor inside the brake controller. Uh, it used to be a little pendulum uh, that as it increases the G-forces of stopping, it will increase the electric current going to the magnets in your brakes. So you'll brake harder and harder, a bit like you're pushing your foot right. harder and harder on the brake. They'll do it electronically. And that's how electric brakes okay. work. You so- can't have electric brakes without a brake controller. Of course, if you don't, you put your foot on the brake, you'll get maximum braking on your trailer and you won't yeah. go anywhere. Okay. So it makes the driving experience a little smoother. It, oh, yeah, it, yeah. It, and you can adjust them. that and usually you can override it as well. In a situation if the band starts to sway and you're feeling a bit uncomfortable, um, you can actually reach down. There's a little controller on mm. the on the con- brake controller, a little button that you push and that will actually apply the brake separately from your car. Uh. So your trailer will then technically pull up behind you or start to pull up behind you and hopefully it will stop yep. it from swaying, yeah. Yeah, that's right. really awesome. Mm. Okay. So also how important is weight distribution? Because I know we talked a little bit about that last episode in terms of whether or not you're, you're going on the road or if you're going off-road mm. or whatever, how you distribute weight. Um, well, distributing weight in your caravan, you still got to sort of maintain that ball weight of some sort. If you have the, the caravan heavy, tail heavy, you're going to get swaying. It's going to be a terrible thing to drive. Mm-hmm. Um, you've got to have your weight over your wheels and only about 10% of that on the front. Now, as I say, 10% is a guide. Um, you look at these big caravans or a big trailer that weighs 350, sorry, three and a half tonne, 3,500 kilos. You put that behind a car and put 350 kilos on the tow ball, mm. you're, the car is going to sag something shocking. Yeah. So you'll find the, big vans yeah. like that won't have a whole 10%. They'll have less than that. Okay. Uh, and it's interesting cars will have far less as well. I've got a Land Rover Defender. Mm-hmm. I can legally tow three and a half tonne with that car. Mm. But the turbo weight is only 150 kilos. Yeah, right. Okay. So oh, right. I can't carry 350 kilos. And you'll find most vehicles I'll be like that. You look at the Land Cruisers, you know, same thing. All the big four wheel drives, they've got big capacity to tow, but they can't carry the weight on the turbo. It's simply an engineering thing. The car is not designed to carry that much weight behind yeah. the back wheels. Uh, on the tow ball, you just have uncontrollable lift at the front and sag at the back. The springs will sag. You know, that's mm. a lot of weight to put behind the wheels, mm. plus the own, your own luggage that you might put in. So that's so, a really important thing because yeah. it's easy just to go, my vehicle weighs this, my trailer weighs this, I'm, I'm within what the place is, mm. I'm fine. But the tow ball mass is 
probably almost more important yeah. than the actual well, that mass should of the also trailer. be on your compliance plate. It'll tell you what the total weight yeah. will be on it. And uh, yes, that's how you. Um, that's what you can. Is limit there you. any difference between off road, like four wheel driving, and uh, on road in terms of? Not really. Doing not really. That? You know, you're still stuck by the the, the trailer mass, the mm-hmm. aggregate air mass, and the gross vehicle mass. Mm-hmm. Those three things are, are pretty crucial. Mm-hmm. Uh, as far as legally towing, whether your car can tow a two-ton caravan off-road is another matter altogether. Yeah. You know, it, it's hard to pull two tonnes through soft sand. It just yeah, doesn't, okay. doesn't work yeah. too well, you know. Did we yeah. touch before, we think we briefly touched on the, I, I think you did the way you asked about the water in the tanks, didn't you? Yes. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, sorry, I just want to make sure we covered off on yeah. that. Yep. So mm-hmm. weight distribution then. Yes. Um, obviously that stuff in the, in the caravan. I know I've got a friend who said, oh, we packed – the caravan and everything, and then they did something and went to back out and it, and it dipped in the middle and they repacked all their caravan to oh, right. redistribute the weight. Then yeah. Maybe they were overloaded, I'm not sure. But yeah. so yeah. when people are packing stuff in the caravan, mm. what Over weight's the, just got to be distributed to even from, from end yeah. to end. Yeah. 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 I, I get a little bit worried, and I think I mentioned this last time, I've seen caravans that have got an outboard motor sitting on the drawbar or a generator mm. and um, often you see a, a fold-up trailer. Uh, fixed to the back of the caravan, bolted on. A so, fold-up trailer? Yeah, fold-up trailer. On you the trailer? Fold-up trailer. And it's actually, <laughs> or, or even a motorbike. I've seen motorbikes. Yeah, okay. motorbikes. Big uh, toolboxes full big of- Big toolboxes, um, big aluminium toolboxes. Yep. Now, they're going to really affect your distribution of your weight and mm. you just have to be careful. Uh, even vans with front boots, they say you can only put a certain amount in them, mm. uh, like tables, chairs, hoses. Those things are not heavy. But if you put a you know 50 kilo generator on there in a frame, Boy, that's going to make a whole lot of difference to your, mm. your towing. Yeah, yeah, totally. So weight's got to be over the axle, same as ideally over the axle, but you still yeah. got to be within that gross vehicle mass yeah. over your axle. Yeah. yeah, and you can't obviously go over the ATM. So I just mm. want to reiterate: your tear mass is how much the caravan weighs straight from the from the factory. Basically, they sometimes call it a dry weight. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'll just put one more bit in. Often you'll read that they talk about vehicle mass including fluid reservoirs. Now they are more. <coughs> sorry. They are more applying to the vehicle towing it because your fluid reservoirs would be your coolant, oil in the engine, brake fluid, and some fuel in the fuel tank. Uh, you need that for the car to operate, so they include that in the TMS. In the caravan, you don't need to have water in the tank to tow it. You mm. still tow it. So the TMS of the caravan does not include water or gas in the gas bottle or waste water in the waste tank, anything like that. It's a dry weight. Mm. Uh, your aggregate TMS is the weight of the caravan loaded with all of its gear it can have. Uh, and your gross vehicle mass is the weight over the axles only uh, of a loaded caravan. And then you're getting your gross combined mass, <laughs> which is your car and caravan together, mm. which is another thing again. But yeah, I'll Admittedly, I think I sort of just zoned out a bit yeah, there. Yeah, I know. <laughs> just start writing these things down <laughs> yeah. when you're doing your mass. Yeah. And I think, I think yeah. it's we'll important have this, to, We'll put this in the show notes. Yeah. Pretty, yeah. Yeah. Try Go back to square one. Look at what your car can tow, what you mm-hmm. can carry. Look at the compliance plate. If you're <laughs> under all those weights, you're fine. And yeah. there's some cool videos too on like little toys. On oh, I think we yeah. mentioned the last episode showing if the ve- if the caravan's not re- loaded right, what can happen to your car? That's right. Yeah, that's and cool. just have a look at it yeah. because yeah. yeah, it's nice. It's funny yeah. to watch a little toy do it, but you wouldn't want to be doing that on a highway. I've been in that situation. It is very scary. Yeah, not in control. Especially when I've got a thirty foot caravan doing it behind me. Oh, oh yeah, that's no, another that's story. Not good <laughs> at all. Yeah. <laughs> I think we've touched on weights enough, haven't we? Should we move we have we have something yep. a bit yep. more um, a bit more interesting? So we've got here to chat about towing mirrors, but we'll get. Um, I, th- I reckon we'll go into that a bit further when we're talking more about actual towing. Yeah. But is there any considerations with tire pressures and things like that when you're towing a van? Um, I think it goes down to, to just common sense. There'll be a recommended tyre pressure that will come with your van. If you buy a new van, they'll say tyre pressure should be at, say, 40 PSI for highway use. But, of course, as most people who drive dirt roads as well, you know Mm -hmm. you can reduce tyre pressure to ease the impact Mm -hmm. of the bumps through the the caravan or through your car as well. I mean, your four-wheel drives, it's a common thing. You get on dirt roads, you drop your tyre pressure a little bit. Now, everyone does that because it just makes the car ride a bit softer Mm -hmm. uh, and caravans are no different. So if you're dropping your tyre pressure on your car, then drop your tyre pressure on your caravan as well uh, to around about the same. But, yeah, just follow the manufacturer's advice on what that should be. And if you're buying a second-hand caravan that maybe is 
you know, reasonably old and doesn't necessarily have any of that original information. Mm. Is that um, tire pressure info printed somewhere in the caravan or is there a place where people can go to get that info online or a resource? Yep. I think you'll find most tire places if you go and ask them, okay. uh, tell them what size tire you've got and what it's on, they'll mm-hmm. easily say, look, you, you should have approximately this sort of tire pressure in there. Yep. Um, there's usually a maximum inflated pressure stamped on the tire somewhere. Yep. Um, but yeah, just get some advice on what you should. As I said, 40 PSI is a basic highway pressure. Mm-hmm. Um, going on dirt roads, they often go down to around about the 20 PSI. But look, mm-hmm. that depends on the road, depends on the weight. You don't want to have a big bulging tyre because it's, it's so heavy that 20 PSI is not going to hold it. You've got to yeah. use a bit of common sense with it, yeah. Yeah. What about spare tyres for, I guess it's more for off-road use, isn't it? Or probably anyway, I guess you need to make sure you've got a spare tyre that oh, fits absolutely. the st- um, stud pattern of your caravan. Yep. 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 And if you're off-road, um, maybe, I don't know, this is always a balance, isn't it? Extra spare tyres is another 50 yes. kilos yes. versus, yes. Yes. Um, and, and that's going to be extra strain on the tyre versus not taking it all. So Yeah, so you do have to sort of consider, I mean, a, spare, a second spare tyre is really good if you're going on a lot of, Dirt roads. Um, mm-hmm. I've got two spare tyres, one for the car, two extra spare tyres, an extra one for the Land Rover, an extra one for the caravan, which I carry. Mm. Um, because I, I, the thing is with caravan, you've got all that weight. On you know, a single axle caravan, you might have 1,800 kilos or so on one or on two tyres. Mm. Your car might weigh two tonne, but that's over four car tyres. Mm. So the weight distribution on the tyre is greater on the caravan than on the car, simply because it's not spread out the same. So it's a good idea to have two spare wheels or a caravan, particularly if you're going on really long trips and you're going to have dirt roads, but mm. you have to consider you've got to carry that somehow. Yep. Mm. And suspension too, another consideration. I know I've seen someone on, I think it was Udna Data or Strezeki Track or something, belted past me. I was probably doing 80 Ks and he belted past me with a big caravan on top, yep. probably 50, 100 Ks down the road. He's pulled over and he's under the car pulling a, I think he was pulling one of his um, shockers off. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. And he was going to just limp in with one shocker in the shocker, end. And yeah, yeah. I think the consideration there is obviously the heat that builds up. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. And if you're saying, I guess most four wheel drive trailers usually have, um, or caravans have four wheels. So there's probably yep. four, or probably more shockers mm-hmm. in underneath there. Yeah, yeah. But the constant movement of that mm-hmm. in and out creates heat. And that's when they. Yeah, it just gets back to common sense. If you're on a really rough road, just slow down. I've, yeah. I've said the same thing. I've seen people go past me and, you know, 20 k's down the road here, they're on the side of the road changing a shredded tyre. Yeah. Uh, and, or they're under the trailer or under the car or they're under the bonnet or something's fallen off the roof, you know, because yeah. it's just going so fast and everything's getting pounded like crazy. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Just to slow down. Slow down. Yeah. Reduce your pressures and Reduce slow down. Reduce your pressures, slow down, drive safely, drive yeah. to their conditions. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Good one. Um. So before you tow, what's the final sort of, you're all packed, you're ready to go. Yep. What's yep. your final checks that you got to go through? Um. Final checks now, actually. Wrote some things down here. Kevin's got such a neat page of notes. He here. does. Oh, right. yeah. See that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's my script. I did those last night while watching Scribble TV. Scribble out and all. Yeah. yeah. Um, just got to scroll all over it. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, yes. Look, the, the things you need to look at uh, is the thing coupled to your car properly. Mm-hmm. It's not hard if you're in a bit of a rush to forget there's a little safety clip on the coupling. Mm-hmm. Um, if it doesn't go down into place, you hit a big bump, the caravan can pop off. And, uh, you know, that's where your safety chains come in. But obviously you need to have safety chains attached as well and your weight distribution bars are correctly fitted. Now, some cars do have them, some cars don't. Uh, my caravan's a tiny little thing. It weighs 1,100 kilos. I think I've got a 1,250 maximum uh, ATM. Uh, it, it doesn't even alter the back of the Land Rover. Land Rover, I think it drops five, five millimetres. Okay. You know? So I don't need to have that, but some cars do simply so- because – Weight, the weight distribution bars, so yes. just to clarify, they're those extra bits at the front that kind of go those further under bars. the car to try yep. and spread the weight that's more. That's right, yep. that's right. They they act by kind of like tilting the car forward, I suppose. You imagine a seesaw, if you sit on one side, one goes down, the other goes up. Mm-hmm. Same thing happens to your car. Caravan mm-hmm. goes down on the back, the front wheels lift just slowly, but they mm-hmm. will lift. Now, the bars have that opposite effect. When you put them under tension, they will try to push the car forward and actually move your centre of gravity forward a little bit mm-hmm. uh, and put more weight on the front wheel. So what you try to aim for is a car that might sit a little bit lower mm-hmm. but is level. Yeah. And that's what those bars are there for. Okay. Um, but just make sure they're on properly. Make sure your windows and doors are all shut. Make sure your hatch on your roof is shut. A lot of people forget okay. to shut that. Mm-hmm. It's rattling away and gets blown off. Um, if your fridge has a 12-volt option, put it on 12-volt. Because if you're being on gas on power, you unplug all those things, the fridge will stop working. Yeah, but at of the end course. of a hot day, you find that everything's melting. Okay. So switch it over to 12 volt. Don't forget mm-hmm. to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, write a little list for yourself and stick it near the door. 
Yeah. Let's uh, go yeah. on the back of the door. Just make this is done, that's done, that's done. All your catches are shut, uh, everything's closed. I lock my door uh, yeah. because then I don't have to worry about if I park the car, I don't have to worry about making sure I've locked it if I'm going to walk away and go into the shop. So mm. lock your caravan door, turn your gas bottles off. I also turn off my water pump. Okay. Because if the door road's rattling and a pipe happens to burst, the pump will start up. All right. And it'll pump water all squirting. through your caravan. Yeah, good one. So oh. I, I usually turn my good pump advice. off. I've got an ice is, that, is that from yeah. experience? Uh, from not my personal experience, but I have seen it happen. <laughs> You've learned from the misfortune I have seen of others. Like I said, the water was just flowing out the door. <laughs> you know, it was like a little waterfall. <laughs> yeah, it was just pumping away. It had, he had two tanks of 90 litres each and they were Whoa. almost empty. They were all oh inside wow. his van. So, yeah, because it just started pumping away. So, yeah, I turned that off. Yeah, wet yeah. caravan and the dangers wet of not car- having 180 litres of water that you thought oh, you had as yeah, well. So, yeah, that's yeah. right. Well, he said, yeah, I ran out of water and I had a really wet caravan. <laughs> <laughs> Great start to the trip. And yeah. obviously securing everything inside the caravan seems obviously like an obvious thing to me. Don't leave um, your fruit bowl sitting on top of a That's bench. right. And also a lot of people have TVs mounted on the wall. Mm. Um, most of these TVs you can actually easily lift off. Okay. Uh, unless you've got some sort of securing strap uh, to, to hold it in place. I would say to people, look, take it off its mount and lay it flat on the bed and put a blank over it. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's not going to bounce around and go taken off, uh, particularly if you're stopping or swerving hard. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah, but all those sort of things, just make sure everything's secured inside your van, yeah. Good advice. Now, well, let's let's touch on towing mirrors. Yes. Shall we? Yeah. Um, we've, yeah, right in front of us here. We, we saw heaps of these mm-hmm. at, at Snowy's. These are the Malenko ones and yep. they get a really good wrap with how they attach really easily. Yes. Um. There was a question around uh, flat glass, convex glass. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I mean, what, have you got any? Um, we've always just said in customer support, convex is similar to Euro cars and a lot of Euro yeah. models. So people who are used to convex glass would just go that, but it sound ultimately a personal preference. Would it that is. be correct? Yeah, yeah. Your convex glass gives you a, a broader range of vision, but it can affect your depth of field. What okay. you think might be just behind the caravan is almost on top of you. Or right. vice versa. Um, so, yes, it, but if you're used to that sort of thing, that's fine. My Land Rover's got con- convex mirrors and uh, it took me a little while to get used to them. Yeah. Um, but now I know that, yes, if I can see something, I can judge it's not that close or it's actually quite close. Um, but if you're not used to it, it can be a little bit unnerving. But, okay. Um, so flat tells you what it is really. That's convex right. gives you more view, yep. but yep. you might need someone at the back just kind of giving you the – That's right. <laughs> thing is, if you're distance, putting like, accessory mirrors on um, – You've got – if your car's already got flat mirrors, um, they're not going to be much good because you can't see past the van. Mm. But convex mirrors, you'll be able to see quite well. Whereas your convex mirrors on your car will give you that broader range of vision, mm. but the flat glass on these tower mirrors will give you depth. Right. So oh. you've got a bit of both. So so in my mind I was thinking if you have convex wing mirrors, then get convex towing mirrors, but you're saying it's good to have a combo of both styles. It's just styles. an idea. Yeah, okay. it's just some way, one way to look at it. Mm-hmm. Um, some people might not agree with that. That's just yep. fair enough. They might like the idea of the convex mirrors. Um, but it's just something that I sort of think I used to say to people, what have you got in the car? Well, mm. I've got these curtain mirrors. Well, I'd recommend you look at the flat mirrors just to give you that broader depth of field behind you, you can see a bit easier how far that post is, mm-hmm. you know, before you hit it type of thing. Whereas you might think, oh, miles away, yet you're only sort of this far. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if you're not used to it, yes, that's when you can have a bit of a bump. And if you've got someone else with you, they oh, can that's just the be best behind person. with the convex mirrors. Thing, you've yeah. got a wider scope of or wider field of view and you've got someone letting you know if you're that's about right. to take out a post right, or something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it's a personal choice which way you go for, yeah. Yeah. Mm. And is there any in terms of, because I know the Malenko mirrors that um, we have at Snowy's, for example, there, there are some that are like a smaller teardrop shape yep. and others that are larger and rectangular. Mm-hmm. Is there is that, again, a personal preference thing? It is, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just what you think you can see the best is. You've got mm-hmm. to be able to see down the side of your caravan all yep. the way down. Uh, the side, so you can have a judgment of of any vehicles that are behind you. You see them popping out every now and then. You can't see down the side of your caravan. You're a little bit blind, but as to what's behind you. So, is there, um, in terms of when you're looking in your mirror, you, you're talking about seeing all the way down the side of the mm. caravan and obviously behind it. Is there any particular way that they need to be set up in terms of distance? From the caravan out, or what's if you're looking in your in your mirror, realistically, mm. what should you be seeing back at you? If you if you got your car set up nice and straight, mm-hmm. driveway, get your partner to stand at the back corner of the caravan. If you can see them fully, then you're okay. If they can see your towing mirror fully, then you're okay. If you've okay. only got half the vision, you're not okay. You need okay. to be able to see clearly. And the police officer told me once that what they do if they're wanting to 
check on a van, they'll just pull out slightly and they'll look down the side of the van. If they can't see a mirror, they're going to pull you over. Ah. Right, okay. Yeah, yeah. and they, they, they'll know that you can't see them. So, of so course. You, so you're saying someone stands behind the caravan? At the back looks, of the caravan, just, just at the back the corner. Yeah, and uh, look, kind of looking around the corner and, a little bit. Yeah, just stand there uh, so that you're fully – so the van will be here, I'll stand right right there type yep. of thing. And um, if the driver can't, can't see me, then there's something wrong. Okay. If you can see me, and this is both sides too, by the way, not just the driver's side, you've got to do mm-hmm. both sides as well. Um, if you can see that person standing there or if you can see the rear side lights of your caravan, that's also a good indicator. Turn your lights on if you can see the rear side clearance light. That's also a good indicator that you can see as much as you can. You okay. can't see right behind the van, obviously. Obviously. But you can have a good idea that someone's there mm. which you'll see part of their car so you'll know that there's a vehicle just behind you. Of course. Okay. Uh, that's important. Yeah, that is really to check it out. important. Um, let's cover off on – I think we talked for half hour now on <laughs> – um, Weights and weights, mirrors weights, just about. So, yeah. mm. um, it, it's a big subject, but, yeah. What, what about yeah, just the actual driving element yeah. of it? Like there's, should, should people take a course or is there a course? Should people do there that? There are courses, yes. Um, this can be a big debate, which I won't get into because I've okay. seen this raging on forums yeah, whether right. you should or shouldn't have licences. Right, eh? Okay. Okay. Maybe but, we should get into this another well, time. I just want to make a, one point. In Australia, you mm-hmm. can legally drive on a car license, a vehicle that weighs up to four and a half ton. Yeah, right. Now, okay. if you look at, uh, once again, I'll use my Land Rover as an example. Uh, it has a gross vehicle mass of 2,240 tons. Mm-hmm. I can tow three and a half ton. Mm-hmm. So I can have a gross combined mass of 6,000, no, sorry. Around the six, so, I can't remember. Yeah, two, two and around and the six ton, half, five yeah. and a half to six ton. Mm-hmm. Now I can do that on a car license. I may have never driven a car, anything bigger than a very medium-sized car, but I can literally get into four-wheel drive yeah. with this big caravan on behind me yeah. and start driving down the highway. Whereas if it was a truck that weighs that much, you'd need, you need to, to have, have a, a special license. Yeah, like a medium, yep. yeah, a, a medium MR, license, I think, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, I'm lucky. I've got a heavy rigid license. I've had training in heavy, mm-hmm. but a lot of people haven't. Mm. And so while it's not mandatory to have a license, mm. um, out of common sense, if you are not confident – what you're towing, you should go and have a course in towing a caravan. Yeah. And there are some driving schools that will offer it for you. And that just give you tips on how to couple it up properly, how to work the electric brakes, for example, you know, consider turning circles. Mm-hmm. Um, the caravan will track inside your car when you turn, you know, and when you've got a 20-foot van on, that's a big circle, you know. Uh, yeah. they'll, they'll take out stubby poles, give a signs, all sorts of things. Because I, I suppose things like, you know, even just a simple matter of overtaking someone on the road, yeah. it's going to be very different with a caravan oh, behind absolutely. you than even in your normal yep. car loaded yep. up. Yep. You put your foot down, the car won't respond as quickly. Mm. Um, also, particularly big trucks, you get a lot of wind coming off the front of them. Mm. As the car goes past, it's one thing. The van goes past, the wind hits the van, the van will sway a little bit. And if mm. you're ready for it, that's okay. But if you're mm. not ready for it, that can be a bit scary. Mm-hmm. Um, and also just allowing that you've got to go past the truck. Now, this is where you get into your convex mirrors or your flat mirrors. You can't yeah. really see easily distance the distances that you're yeah. past the truck. So you pull in, you pull in a bit close, you're going to get a horn blown, flashing lights, and the truck's going to say some naughty things to you. <laughs> yeah. Because you know, you've just about hit the front of his truck. And yeah. so you've just got to sort of be careful, be aware of the size. Um, braking capacity will slow down. You won't be able to stop as quickly. Yeah. Of course, you've got another couple of tonne pushing you along. Uh, and it's only might only have one set of wheels trying to stop you on the single axle van. So yeah. there's lots of things to consider. Yeah, I think you highlighted it really well. Is saying a car license you can have what you up to four and a half ton. Yeah, but if you combine that, combine you that don't need a different license to yeah. to, to mm. drive on the road with a combined. Well, a Land re- Cruiser far more than that. I think a 200 series Land Cruiser is weighing about 2.7 tons. It can also tow three and a half ton. Mm. So that's that's that's, a, that's, that's you know yeah. close to seven point two tons yeah, six, yeah, over yeah. six. Yeah. So I guess um, <laughs> for, for those who are getting into it, just be aware that just you are aware, you, are, you can be are, towing a significant um, very heavy, and the caravan can weigh more than your car. Yeah. And if it's going to suddenly decide it's going to go off the road, it'll take your car with you. And yeah. That, right. That's where the whole setup of weight distribution, electric brakes, understanding what it's doing, it's all a matter of safety. Mm-hmm. And you know, you know, wants to ruin their holiday by having an accident. And no, injured, of course injured, not. Uh, and or injuring other people, you know, those sort of things. Yeah. Uh, and if you swerve hard, your your caravan is going to object to that. Mm. So these are the sort of things you learn when you do a, a towing course. Yeah. Okay. So bearing that in mind, if you are towing a caravan and you're doing a long trip, should you sort of plan more 
break stops because to me that sort of I feel a little bit stressed and exhausted just listening to all of that. It's probably <laughs> translate to when you're driving and towing a heavy load. There's yep, probably yep. a lot more mental drain on you just. If, if you're new to it, yes, you probably would want to have a break more yep. often. Um, if you're an experienced heavy vehicle operator, yeah. like truck drivers, they drive for hours and hours and hours, mm. you know, but they're used to it. Uh, if you're used to doing those sort of hours, then every two hours is what they recommend as a, as a stop as and a rest or change way. drivers over. Yeah. Have a cup of tea, you know, throw the ball around for the kids. The kids would like that too. Yeah. If you've got children course. with you. So just every couple of hours, stop and have a break somewhere and then continue on after that. And I think if you just slow down, it's less draining as well because you're not, um, we, we, we mentioned, you're going to mention here about asking about overtaking, but I think yeah. you've covered that on how the yes, van can, yes. uh, it's going past a truck and, yep. and the winds and that sort of thing. But if you're not in a rush, then you probably don't have to overtake. No, no. no just no. just well, take it easy. When yeah. I've driven, yes, I overtake trucks and of course going up north, as you know, we get road trained, with triple mm. road trains and sometimes even quad road trains. Uh, they're very long. Now, if my wife's driving the car towing the van, she just doesn't want to overtake. Yeah. She said, I'll just sit here. You know, 90 yeah. kilometers an hour is enough for me. You know, that's sort of, and that's fine. She feels comfortable with that. But if I'm driving, I'm comfortable with driving a bit faster. Yes, mm. I'll judge the distance and I'll overtake. But not everyone's like me. You know, like yeah. People Sometimes just aren't used to it. And, and it's, it's a stressful. It's stressful. Yeah, yeah, it is. Sometimes sitting in behind a truck can help you conserve your fuel anyway yeah. if you're oh, yeah. getting in yeah. Yeah. Just stream, stream. Just, just happy to there. happy to puddle along at that that's pace. That's right. Mm. That's right. Yeah. But just be aware of the dynamic forces if you are overtaking. That's the right. winds is hitting That's it, right. a bit of yeah. swerving. It's not just going to be a smooth pull out around and back no. again. You well, need maybe to see the yeah. videos. There's obvious videos on YouTube. I think I've mentioned them of cars losing control. And usually the van starts to sway as soon as it goes past the front of the truck. Yeah, right. It doesn't do anything until oh. it hits that wind coming off it. And ah. you know, it, it can be quite a lot of wind. I've been pushed over into the dirt myself. You know, you, you're talking about wind. So the truck's plowing into the wind, into the wind and, and the wind's the wind being pushed off, off the front. The sides. Yeah, off yeah, the front. Okay. It can be a lot. And mm. uh, as I said, I've ended up over in the dirt, no, not out of control, but it did push me sideways. And uh, yeah, it, it can be a considerable force. They're, yeah, they're wow. big trucks. So yeah, they push a lot of wind. Okay. Mm. All covered in the course. Course, course is probably a good thing to do. Course is a good thing. I would recommend a course. Whether you get a license, that's. Well, as I said, that's a, that's a that's debate a I'm not going to enter into. But at least a course is A course uh, would be particularly really if you're helpful. new to it and you're not confident. Mm. You'd be a bit worried, yeah. yeah. I think we've covered off on heaps about Have you got any other specific questions? No. no. Kev, have you got any other little gems on your on your oh. neatly written notes there? We've we've almost talked for 40 minutes, I think. About, oh. about what were you so watching last night really when you wrote input. the note? I can't remember. Must have, I can't remember. Must <laughs> <laughs> it must have been <laughs> boring. paying attention. Oh, the only other thing I'd probably um, – recommend or make people aware of is if your caravan weighs over two ton, you have to have a breakaway system fitted. Now, okay. this generally comes with the van when you buy one. A breakaway system is a, a an independent controller uh, that's attached to your electric brakes. So should you be unfortunate for the caravan to come off the van and the safety chains not hold it, something tears off, a little pin will get pulled out and mm. the electric brakes will come on on your caravan and stop it careering across the road into um, oncoming traffic. Now, that's oh, right. for vans over two ton. Okay. Uh, and that's mandatory. Okay. So that's, that's if the van's <clears throat> taken off by itself. The van's taken no. off all by itself. You know, you Breaks may have been in a hurry, you haven't coupled it up properly, you've forgotten the chains, you know, or whatever's happened, you know, some major failure, Freak something's accident. torn the van off the car. <laughs> yeah. If it's over too fun, this little pin which is attached to your car will get mm -hmm. pulled out and the brakes will come on and hopefully stop the van. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's the only extra thing. But yeah, it all gets down to safety. Yeah. Um, be aware of the van, you know, be aware of your weights. And I've probably confused people with weights, and I'm sorry if I have. It's 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 something that you do need to know. Yeah, it's and there's important. lots of websites that will tell you what mm -hmm. these are. So, yeah, just look those up and just be aware of the size of the van and have confidence in towing it and have a great trip. I think we mentioned yeah. before too, check your local government um, websites. It's yeah, that's right. from state to state sometimes. And, yeah, Some do. And, the and the national road load, load, road rules have changed or road laws as far as waiting. weights go. Uh, some years ago every state had their own legal requirement. Uh, they made it uniform sometime in the 90s, I can't remember exactly when. Mm. Um, and now so all states follow the same rule as far as weight, towing weights, all weights, GVM, GCM, mm. all those other things, you know, mm -hmm. they're all the same uh, for across Australia now. Well, let's call that an episode. I reckon we've loaded that with some, a lot of information, uh, a little bit 
serious perhaps, yeah. but I think if you, the course, I think it's a good way to go. Just yes. be aware of these things and ask those questions before you hit the road and be aware that you yeah. are, you yeah. are towing a, a, big, right. a big thing in order to have this fun and it's for your safety and the other people on the road. Absolutely. But at the end of the day, like you said, you got to still want to go there and enjoy it. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Just, just, uh, just have to your check into it, enjoy it, do a bit of yeah. research, make sure you're comfortable with it all and yeah. have a great trip. Well, thanks again, Kev, for your insights on caravanning um, around, well, any, anywhere yeah. I was going to say around Australia, but yeah. it could be people all over the world listening to this. Kevin. Yeah, if but anybody's so. got any questions as well, pop them in the Facebook group and yeah. we can yeah. funnel yep. them back to Kev. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah, yep. sure thing. Uh, that's it. Thanks, guys. Thanks for listening. If you, As we mentioned before, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe via YouTube or your favourite podcast app. And if you have any questions for Kev, as Laura mentioned, you can ask those in the Snowy's Camping Show Facebook group. Um, if, if Kev's not in there, we'll be in there and we'll fire yeah. the questions at him and come back to you with those. But thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks, Kev. Thanks, no Kev. Worries. Thank Bye. you. See ya.